Hi, uh, Channel 347, uh, Runny Mead, eviction special day, I don't know, <laughs> it's about the 5th, 6th, 7th day, who, who knows. I'm standing um, in one of my favourite spots in Runny Mead under an oak tree, but to my behind there's a couple of beautiful willows um, that have a spring coming down underneath them. And uh, behind me here is a house that's been sold to um, a private developer, apparently, but um, to my mind, um, uh, with the Obama turning up for the Magna Carta celebrations in June, it's too close to call for me to think this is anything other than you know, an American Bar Association military campaign, because um, uh, this sits right next to the Kennedy Memorial and you know with the house that was squatted apparently we found out for four years suddenly it's become available for sale and um, as you know I've already explained the fence that goes down the side of the field that was on, wasn't here about a month ago three weeks and uh, same thing with that I've explained that before where um, I believe it's because of where it's positioned that um, I recall the company who own this, who are based in the Isle of Man, by the way, which is tax for tax reasons, obviously. Um, the company that owned this and then connected to the Irish Bank. <laughs> I always joke about that. The Irish Bank, well, you know, Irish are always good at jokes, and then they're no more so than the financial situation that they found themselves in. But anyway, eviction, eviction special because we've got a court case coming up um, on Thursday, and uh, quite a few people are going to represent themselves in court against, you know, the possible eviction. And I'm walking back to my hovel, and as I do, I'm gonna explain, or try to, my, my position with regards to the eviction. My position is is simple in the sense that, to get me off here, I'm not going to any court. Because what, what you have to understand, from my point of view anyway, is that a court represents total corruption all courts in this country all courts in america all courts in wet in the west who represent such things as the ownership of land which is what people don't really get um, on land you know my position is this it's clear and you know i i can't emphasize this enough because people are going to go he's not well you know that's up to you but it's quite black and white really the black and white of it is, is this, show me, show me the contract that was first done between the land and the person, and the contract that was made that where, where the land gave up its rights to a person. And I, I might, I might come to, you know, I might do some kind of kind of negotiation whereby I come to agreement that I'm not supposed to be here because someone actually owns the land. But you know, think about it for a second. It's like a fiction. You know, before we got to ownership of land, which is you know relatively recent in human terms um, there was not you know they're now they're trying to spell NASA right NASA's trying to sell space well who ever who ever heard of such a thing selling space you know to different private corporate enterprises and really you only have to put a few things together to realize how bad this corporate idea of owning everything is because the two most recent wars uh, one being in Afghanistan and one being in Iraq are exactly proof of the fact that um, the corporate machine goes in on the back of any war machine to change a world that was not and did not exist in the same way as it did before. Um, uh, with, uh, you know, shopping malls, uh, uh, which, uh, you know, everywhere in the West, you know, this is, a, this is a picture of the towns and cities in the UK all look exactly the same because basically you've got a brand name. Now, the brand names that exist in every high street are kind of a throwdown from, and this is where we are, right? This is how important it is. There are throwdown from the days of um, the 12th century where a few barons got together with the king to say, well, you can't operate by yourself anymore, which would have been the best thing because then you would have had a representative and someone you could have complained to even if it was bad. These days they're hidden because what happened was Barons took away the power from the king. Now, it said that it came to democracy, but, you know, please have a look at this carefully because um, it's not true. 
the barons held on to the power and they kind of gave you democracy as a carrot right they gave you democracy in the thinking that you could have someone to represent you in a parliament well can i please you know how long have you known parliament to be corrupt for a long time yeah but 30 40 years you actually know that they're all corrupt and doing things that you know don't represent democracy at all everybody all of them they're all kind of like you know every five years you have this shambles of a you know american hollywood style program which kind of who's who's gonna win who's gonna lose left and right you know it goes on for how long 100 years if you want it to but it's only when people wake up to the idea that it's a shambles that actually has come from it's been handed down and it's run by very intelligent people um, I'm listening to um, the Illuminati trilogy at the moment by um, Robert Anton Wilson and it's kind of an eye-opener he's quite an intelligent guy he has a laugh and his story is about this island called Fernando Pu Fernando Pu well it's like you know interesting because it's kind of similar to Runnymede Runnymede's a bit Runnymede is a bit Fernando Pu in that here we've got a kind of an anarchy where anything goes and it's kind of you know true we live uh, we've lived for three years without any politics or, or or anything but we have a group of people 30 or 40 living up here in the woods quite peaceably we haven't caused any problems in three years um, and uh, it, we're now being faced with eviction well um, there's quite a few there's quite a few points you know about five or six really strong points in our favor as to why we were saved. let's start with one of them and that is you know that is that you, this land used to be owned by a, fam a family called the Chilsmore family or in the building at the top and there's plenty of you know photographs of the building I'm not going up there now to show you it but it's the gothic old gothic 17th century mansion uh, owned by the Chil Chilsmore family who I think at the time didn't own this land. There's a question mark over it. it. It could be that we're sitting on common land, which some say may not be in our favour, but it's, it's definitely not true that it would be in our favour if it was common land, and it definitely wouldn't be owned by um, the company Oracle who say they claim they own it. Now, if you, if you look at the maps that came with the plan that was going on at the time that we arrived three years ago, the maps clearly indicated the diagrams clearly indicated that they had wiped themselves of the land that we're on and the borders were, were, were did not include us since that time and I believe you know since that time and I believe uh, it's partly because of the Magna Carta celebrations that were going because the owner of the company up the top Oracle there's an interesting name for you mythology of Oracle have a look at up have a look you know the the the, the Queen princes who lived in a cave and who answered questions from from kings or queens back in the days of the myth of and uh, she would give interesting answers and uh, you know there's a story that actually Runnymede was one of those places uh, and in the great past mythology and there's definitely a power in the scape here in that we're sitting between three memorials the Royal Air Force the Magna Carta and the Kennedy Memorial, and um, and there's a church on top which is not coming down. It's got to stay, and they're building private houses for retirement. And there's a there's to, there's talk that in the deed somewhere, uh, well I've heard both sides. I don't know whether it's true that, that that in building up there they have to include some kind of educational element into. Uh, or social and social element into the building or anything that goes up there. And I don't know what they're doing about that. If it, if at all it's true, anyway, I'm not sure about that one. But you know, we're fighting. We're fighting because for several reasons. Fighting, fighting for the right, the right to live on the land and grow vegetables as long as you're not harming anybody else. And we're actually away from any community. We're not close to a community. It's difficult for people to to bring in. Um, what I call, you know, the most harmful drug in, in the world at the moment is alcohol. And in England especially, we're addicted to this stuff. And it's, it's uh, far more of a, you know, the word you can use for it as a drug that has been given to us as a, as, as, as a dumbing down method because, you know, when it comes to anything hallucinogenic, you can be sure that the authorities in the state have a word about um, 
you know whether whether there should be any re research into this matter. I was just listening yesterday to you know the story of Timothy Leary, who wanted to study uh, acid and how it uh, could be used to, to um, help people through difficult times and in an, any number of ailments, you know, that, um, and it's been proven to, to work, but um, you can be sure that the government didn't want um, someone like Tim Leary exploring it because then it would get out to the public arena and the last thing um, a controlling system wants is any, any, anyone who's kind of, or too many people who are enlightened. And uh, Timothy Leary was put in prison for 35 years for one joint. Well, no, tell, tell me a story, right, of about someone who's, who's obviously got a name for himself and um, the government didn't want any more publicity in that area, so they put him away and kind of like the fear goes down through the lines and everybody goes, oh, we shouldn't be saying we're studying this now because we'll be, hmm. well, there you go, you know. Anyway, the evictions, the eviction goes on. They're going to court on... Thursday, and um, my hope is that in that that the judge will see some light at least and give us a stay of welcome. Uh, there's also other positive, you know. There's also reasons why we, we should stay. All to do with sustainability and living off grid and trying to create a new world, uh, Mother Gear, and you know, we want people to come up here. You know, we want come people come up here and stand for their rights. You know, billions of people, thousands and thousands of people moved at the time of Occupy. Well, this is even more important than Occupy, and it's also moved on from there, and the world is going to change. It's just how it's going to change is interesting, because um, it seems to be a lot more dumbed down since, but people have got to wake up, and now is the time. If you're not kind of moving now, then you're going to get caught by the system. So you've got to fight for those things you believe in right now. Um, anyway, I'm gonna, 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 I'm, gonna, I'm doing a recording, right, from people, from Running Mead, um, soon, uh, in a studio. I'm gonna do a CD, Running Mead CD, with all the people who've lived here, uh, who are gonna write and leave poems and songs and stuff on on a CD. So, you know, if you ever wanted to know about what and who was up here, in the three years uh, and more, because thing was that we're gonna stay, we're gonna, we're gonna win this fight, because I believe it's time to win a fight. Uh, for the future of mankind rather than not because this is the time when you know you have to consider whether there's any future at all in people trying to live this way and getting over the problem of the terms of the words like hippie that you come up with to explain this well, well you know you're gonna have to lose and grow up about that we're gonna have to kind of get over that we're not we're actually trying you know to work out ways of living off grid and disentangling ourselves from a system which is all about you know, raping the world and of its resources and mass production, which we all know does not work, just like we know the politics does not work. Um, more about that another time. But hey, I'm going to do a recording of a song at the Magna Carta tomorrow or the day after. And I'm going to do a song called My Love uh, at the Magna Carta and have a word or two about the Magna Carta then. For now, um, I wish you a lovely day. Do you like my teeth? Like they're kind of like. Do you know what I've done with my teeth? I decided about three or four years ago to. I heard about a woman in Iran who grew a third, third, third set of teeth at the age of 104. Huh? What about that then? Well, um, you know, there's lots of things you need to know about what the system puts in you to start to mess around with your body, and one of them's dentists and what they kind of end up doing to you. Put you know, I've had years of fillings which you know, ended up my teeth just dropping out. Did it make any difference? Short, short term. I was there. You have to go back to the dentist to get another filling. They make a lot of money. I've go, go back, you know, re return visits. Well, since the last five years, I've just let them all go and dealt with the pain that comes with it. Kind of, not always, but hey, I'm going to go because I got, hey, bye.